Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dear students, uh, today inshallah we're going to talk about cholinergic receptors and cholinergic receptor acting drugs. Uh, the LOs, uh, students should be able to compare muscarinic and dicotinic receptors, define and classify cholinergic drugs, understand the pharmacological actions of cholinergic drugs. Uh, so, uh, number one, classification of cholinergic receptors. Cholinergic receptors, as you know, they are the receptors for acetylcholine and uh, agonist drugs, drugs that can act like acetylcholine. So, these receptors are subdivided into uh, nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. Nicotinic are further subdivided into the muscle type NM ganglion type, NM, CNS type, and those which are expressed on adrenal medulla. The second uh, subtype of cholinergic receptors is muscarinic receptors. These are further subdivided into M1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So first, let's talk about the nicotinic receptors. Why we start with nicotinic receptors? We start with them because they are the beginning. In the beginning, they start from the CNS, as we'll see in a minute. Why they are called nicotinic? They are called nicotinic because the action of acetylcholine on these receptors can be reproduced by the injection of nicotine. They are ligand like gate ion channels, as we said before. Okay, so this the nicotinic receptor, acetylcholine, is a ligand. Ligand gated ion channel. So the gating is here. Here is the uh, uh, ligand that bind to this gate. So ligand gated ion channel, the receptor here, and this is the ligand. I still going to bind to this receptor on the nicotinic receptor. Nicotinic receptor then undergoes conformational change and allow the passage of ions like sodium and calcium. Okay, as you know this can lead to uh, action potential or uh, uh, certain uh, parasympathetic mimetic action on certain effector organs. Uh, <clears throat> do you remember this figure? I said before, this is a very, very important figure. Do you remember? Anyway, if you don't remember, I'm reminding you again. Remember that I said this is a very important uh, figure. Here is the CNS, okay, brain, spinal cord, I said at that time, everything, any neuron that's coming out of the central nervous system will release at the end acetylcholine. This acetylcholine will act on nicotinic receptors. I said the, the receptor, the uh, neurotransmitter is acetylcholine and the receptor is nicotinic. Acetylcholine, nicotinic. Okay, acetylcholine, nicotinic. And further subdivision, NN, because these are in the ganglia, they call them NN. Okay. NN, okay, again, acetylcholine, nicotinic receptor coming direct from the CNS. Acetylcholine coming from CNS, nicotinic NN. Again, coming uh, from direct from CNS, releasing acetylcholine, and the receptor is nicotinic because I think adrenal medulla is kind of a modified ganglia. So all of these are NN, okay. Uh, then, uh, uh, this is, I'm sorry, this is a sympathetic nervous system, okay. Uh, this is adrenal medulla. Adrenal medulla is still the modified ganglia, okay? And the, uh, uh, again, the acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter, and the receptor is the nicotinic receptor. Uh, finally, the somatic neuron. You know, somatic neuron, there is no ganglia. There is no ganglion in somatic neuron, right? So the nerve travels all the way from the CNS into the effector organ over here, which is here, is the muscle. The receptor here is. NM, okay, so N is nicotinic, 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 and the further subdivision in the second N is neural or ganglion type, okay, and here is M, which means M type, okay, I think easy now, so everything is coming out directly from the CNS, the, the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine, the receptor is nicotinic, okay, and everything in the ganglion is NN, okay, and, uh, and, and there is also another receptor on the adrenal medulla, and on the muscle is NM muscle, okay? Okay, so further details of these receptors, the NM, the somatic one, the one on the, on the skeletal muscle, okay? 
So the receptor is on the motor in the plate. Okay, it's post synaptic. It's post synaptic. It's, it's increases sodium permeability, so it's excitatory. Okay, agonist on these uh, NM receptors are like acetylcholine, carbacol, saxinylcholine. Very important, saxinylcholine has another uh, name, which is suxamethonine. Please remember this letter S, suxamethonine. Uh, this stimulates the skeletal muscle, causing contraction. Uh, uh, antagonists are uh, like uh, cubocuralin and hexamethonium. Same spelling as suxamethonium and hexamethonium. If you get confused, use this mnemonic S for st stimulatory. So this stimulates NM nicotinic receptors. Okay, and the H consider it's inhibitory. Okay, so it will inhibit the uh, nicotinic NM receptors. Okay, so these are the examples. As you know, in pharmacology, all the names of the drugs are important. They are expressed as the motor endoplasm. The second subtype is NN, a ganglion type. It's present in autonomic ganglia in all, all autonomic ganglia. Everything, sympathetic, parasympathetic, yes. Doctor, is acylcholine. I running out of memory. I said yesterday my SD card is big from the left, 180, uh, 28 uh, gigabytes. So it's very good enough to handle this information. Yes, sympathetic. Parasympathetic, the same. It's acetylcholine and the receptor is nicotinic. Okay. Uh, the receptors are postsynaptic. Okay. So now, if the, if the, the ganglia is here, okay, the receptor will be here. Uh, it's uh, increased sodium permeability, so it's excitatory. Agonists are by, like uh, acetylcholine, carbacol, and nicotine. Uh, antagonist uh, examples mecamylamine and trimetaphan. The third subtype is uh, the CNS type. It's present on the central nervous system. It could be pre or post synaptic. Again, it's excitatory. Agonists are like uh, nicotine and acetylcholine. Uh, the functions cause pre and post synaptic stimulation of many brain regions. Antagonist uh, example is mecamyelin. The last uh, subtype is expressed on the renal medulla, where acetylcholine binds to these receptors. Nicotinic receptors on the adrenal medulla to stimulate the secretion of adrenaline from adrenal medulla. Okay. The second subtype is muscarinic receptors. Okay. Again, why they are called the muscarinic? They are called the muscarinic because the action of acetylcholine on these receptors could be reproduced by the injection of muscarine. There is alkaloid uh, that can activate muscarinic receptors. Uh, as we said before, we, we just talked about two receptors, two receptor families. We said ligand gate ion channels and G protein coupled receptors. Okay, we said nicotinic receptors are ligand gate ion channels, whereas uh, muscarinic receptors are G protein coupled receptors. Uh, as we said before, there are five subtypes five subtypes one, two, three, four, and five. The odd numbers one, three, and five. They are GQPCR. We said that uh, in the previous lecture. Okay, so they increase inositol. They activate in uh, uh, phospholipase C, which is splits PIP2 into diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate. Uh, the even numbered receptors M2 and M4. They are, they are GIPCR. They inhibit adenylate cyclase and thus uh, reduce the amount of cyclic NP. The third uh, category is G protein, could be G protein associated or gated channels, okay, whereas uh, where the muscarinic acetylcholine receptors may activate or inhibit potassium and calcium channels. Okay, uh, where are they? Where are these receptors? They are located in tissues innervated by postganglionic parasympathetic neurons. Remember, pre-ganglionic, parasympathetic, and sympathetic. They release acetylcholine, and the receptor is nicotinic receptor. But here, post, post, post-ganglionic, parasympathetic, it releases acetylcholine, and the receptor is muscarinic receptor. They are on smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and gland cells. You'll see in the next slide. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> 
there are also this kind of an exception to the rule. The sweat gland, the nerve to the sweat gland starts as sympathetic. So it's thoracolumbar. It's thoracolumbar. And then uh, the postganglionic uh, neuron uh, releases at the end acetylcholine, which acts on muscarinic receptors. Doctor, this is sympathetic. Yes, I know. It's sympathetic. But this is just an exception to a rule, a rule where uh, the, uh, the nerve is sympathetic, but at the end it releases acetylcholine, and the, the receptor is muscarinic. If you, know, if you need to know further, there is muscarinic M3. These receptors are also expressed in the central nervous system, and the details are in the next very big table. Okay, here's the M1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Locations. Uh, M1 is located, it's called the neural. Neural, the name helps, right? We said before. So it's expressed in autonomic ganglia, in sound, also in the adult neural, it's also expressed on glands, like salivary gland, gastric gland, uh, lacrimal gland, and on cerebral cortex. Okay. The cerebral response is easy. Now we know it's GQ, right? So I expect uh, innocent adult right to speak, expect DAG, okay. The functional response, excitation of the CNS, and gastric secretion. Please remember, sometimes you get confused because it's called the neural. Yes, neural, this is the main function, but it, uh, it also enhances gastric secretion. That's why we use drugs like pyrene zepine as a drug to treat peptic ulcer by inhibition of this M1 receptor because pyrene zepine is selective inhibitor of this receptor. Agonists uh, are like, these are non-selective agonists, actually. They work on all subtypes of receptor M1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like acetylcholine, carbacol, and so forth. Uh, uh, non-selective uh, antagonists are like atropine, dicyclovirine, and so forth. And selective is pyrene zepine, only selective at uh, M1 uh, subtype. The second subtype is M2. It's called the cardiac, because mainly it's expressed on cardiac cells, and the heart and the atria, but also it's expressed on uh, some areas in the CNS. Uh, again, it's GI, so it decreases cyclic ANP, functional response, cardiac inhibition. So that's why the uh, uh, acetylcholine and parasympathetic drugs can cause decrease in the heart rate. Uh, neural inhibition, central muscarinic effects uh, like tremor and hypothermia. The, uh, again, the agonists are the same. Uh, selective antagonist is galamine. M3 is called the glandular smooth muscle. Glandular smooth muscle. Uh, it's expressed on the uh, exocrine glands, such as gastric glands, and also the smooth muscles such, uh, such as GIT, airway, urinary bladder, and on the endothelium. Uh, it's GQ, again, we said 1, 3, 5 GQ, okay, so, uh, uh, so it increases the inositol triphosphate and calcium. Functional response, uh, uh, gastric salivary secretion, and uh, smooth muscle contraction, ocular accommodation for what? For near vision, yes, good. And vasodilatation. Okay, the selective agonist is sevimilin, and the selective antagonist is daripenacin. M4 and uh, M5, these are uh, the receptors are have been discovered recently. So these both receptors are expressed on CNS. Okay, and uh, they are M4 GI, so it decreases or uh, decreases the cyclic NP. Uh, the function response enhances the locomotion. Uh, selective antagonists are like mamba toxin. Uh, M5, again, on the CNS, it's GQ, so increase uh, in cytotrophic triphosphate, and uh, the function is unknown. Okay, so uh, now we need to talk about drugs. We need to talk about pharmacology, okay? So cholinergic drugs, they are called also parasympathomimetics or cholinomimetics, all are the same. They either act directly or indirectly, directly by activating the receptor right away, okay? But they also could act indirectly by inhibiting acetylcholine sterase, the enzyme that, break down, that breaks down acetylcholine, so they enhance or uh, enrich or increase, augment the amount of acetylcholine at the receptor site, so acetylcholine will exert it. So they are indirect parasympathomimetics. Okay, uh, so uh, look at this hierarchy now. So now cholinergic drugs are uh, subdivided into direct acting. As we said, they act direct on the receptors, like uh, choline esters, including acetylcholine, methylcholine, 
بثاني كول كاربا كول يصير دي ذيس روت كول از everywhere so it makes it easy for you to remember which subtype of this drug uh, alkaloids like mascarine and phylocarpine and the indirect acting as we said they inhibit the acetylcholine kinase enzyme if they inhibit acetylcholine uh, kinase so this will uh, enrich the amount of acetylcholine which can exert its action they are either bind to the acetylcholine uh, straight re reversibly, okay, like physostigmine, pyridostigmine, eustigmine, you see here the suffix stigmine, it's easy to remember that these drugs are acetylcholine steroid inhibitors or indirect acting cholinergic drugs or indirect acting paracetamonetic, hydrophonium and tacrine. Irreversible are in, uh, uh, drugs that bind in, in irreversibly to the uh, Acetylcholine steroid enzyme, so it will inhibit it almost irreversibly. So uh, these are poisons, actually. Uh, like uh, uh, the phosphorothionates, these poisons, these insecticides, parathion, malathion, and propoxone. We'll talk about these in detail later, inshallah. Okay, so uh, you remember we talked about this, we took, we took this figure before and we talked about it before, okay, but in a different, little bit different. Figure, but the, the idea is the same. Okay, so this is the cholinergic transmission. Here is the acetylcholine entering into the synaptic vesicle via choline carrier. Acetylcholine then is stored in the synaptic vesicle, then it will be released, right? And act on the receptor. This cycle here, the usually the scientists invest this information, okay, to develop drugs that can modify the activity of these uh, receptors or activities are in these steps or in these stages. Number one, what they play with? They play with uh, precursor transport blockage. What are the precursors? Number one is choline, okay? So uh, uh, hemicholinium inhibits choline carrier, which is also called what? Hmm? Called what? Yes, carrier A, good. So this choline carrier will be inhibited, so this will inhibit this hemocholine will inhibit the uh, uh, precursor transport, so no, no choline will be transferred into the synaptic vesicle. Okay, uh, another class of drug is uh, visamicol. Okay, visamicol. There is no uh, inhibitor for the choline steroid enzyme, choline acetyl, choline acetyl transfer enzyme. And uh, the third one is the uh, uh, storage of acetylcholine into the synaptic vesicle, right? Uh, as we remember before, we talked about visamicol inhibits acetylcholine carrier, which is also called what? Yes, carrier B. Uh, so it will inhibit the storage of acetylcholine into the, final, uh, into the synaptic vesicle. Third thing is the release. There are two classes or two types of drugs, drugs that facilitate the release, like choline and uh, uh, blackwood spinal venom, spider venom, uh, lateral toxin. This, this facilitates the release or promote the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. And the uh, second one, to uh, prevent transmitter release, so inhibit transmitter release, uh, like botulinum toxin. You remember these, uh, you know, act, uh, female actors, uh, uh, and the whole world, they use this uh, botox, okay, botulinum uh, uh, toxin. Okay, uh, the last thing about, Need to work on the receptor, right? It's just an easy uh, work, okay? Or I'm sorry, uh, before that, in the synaptic cleft, acetylcholine strays, acetylcholine could be broken down by choline strays enzyme, right? But there are drugs that we just talked about them uh, that can inhibit this enzyme, like histamine, okay, inhibit the acetylcholine strays. So acetylcholine itself will be. Uh, uh, in big amount on the receptor, so it will facilitate the action of acetylcholine. That's why they're called indirect acting parasympathomagnetics. The last thing is the receptor, okay? So some drugs inhibit and some drugs activate the mascarinic and uh, mascarinic receptor. Here's mas mascarinic receptor, receptor agonist and antagonist. Okay, so finally, the uh, effects of direct acting choline receptor, cholinoceptor stimulants. So drugs that activate the mascarinic receptors, what they do? 
take it from up down easy yes so on the eye okay they cause contraction in the iris sphincter muscle they cause contraction that's why it causes meiosis okay constriction of the uh, uh, the pupil right uh, on the ciliary muscle, they cause contraction to accommodate for near vision. It's just parasympathetic, guys. Wrist and digest. I'm in a case of wrist. Why should I accommodate for far vision? Just near vision is enough. Okay. Then uh, on the heart, uh, on the uh, please notice here that the parasympathetic nervous system has little or no effect on the ventricles. Okay, so mainly on the atria. So uh, on the SCA node, sinoatrial node, the pacemaker of the heart, they uh, cause, they inhibit, they cause bradycardia on the atrium, they reduce, reduce contraction of the atrium only. On the AV node, they reduce conduction velocity. So because of this and this, they cause bradycardia. Uh, on the arteriole, they cause dilatation via nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, okay, similar to GS, protein coupled receptors but just replace the a with g how okay gs pcr activates adenine cycling right just remove the adenine make it guanine so this guy activates guanylate cycling which converts gtp into cyclic gmp on gs pcr we said ATP and cyclic AMP. Nitric oxide activates uh, guanylate cyclase, which convert GTP, guanosine triphosphate, into cyclic GMP, okay, which activates protein kinase G. Just please, uh, after the lecture, review it and compare. You'll find just you replace A with G, it will be the action of nitric oxide. G, I mean guanylate, guanosine. Then on the bronchi, bronchial muscle, muscle contraction and increased secretion. On the GIT, remember it's rest and digest. Okay, during the uh, parasympathetic nervous system activation, the uh, or it's predominant in rest and digest situation. On the motility of the GIT, it will increase. Okay, to enhance the you know, the peristaltic movement and digestion and at the end of the defecation. GIT, increased secretion to help with the digestion. Okay, sphincters, they should relax, right? And at the end, defecation. And the gallbladder, contraction, so that we can push bile, which facilitates the digestion of fats, to emulsify uh, fats, which will be easy target for the lipase enzymes later. Because these enzymes are protein in nature, okay? They're hydrophilic. They are hydrophilic. So they cannot deal with the lipids. So gallbladder will release bile salt, bile and bile salt, which will emulsify lipids, which uh, uh, after that will meet on the duodenum. You know, uh, the duodenum uh, in the I mean the pancreas, pancreatic secretion will uh, will be released into the duodenum and then will mix with the fats after their emulsification. Then it could be digested. So it's undigest. Okay. On the level of the urinary bladder, okay, on the detrusor muscle, the muscle and the muscle wall in the urinary bladder, contraction. On the trigone and the sphincter of the muscle, okay, they relax so that the, the, the guy or the, the lady can micturate, okay, can urinate. On the male sex organ penis, uh, they call erection. Not ejaculation, please, because ejaculation is enhanced by Sympathetic nervous system, and we'll, as we we'll learn, inshallah, in next lecture. So, this is just erection. Okay. And on the level of glands, just take it from me all glands, there will be increase in secretion, sweat glands, salivary, lacrimal gland, nasopharyngeal gland. But please remember that sweat gland is sympathetic, the neuron is sympathetic, but at the end, it releases acetylcholine, and the receptor is muscarinic, muscarinic M3 receptor. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Okay, please enjoy and say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And see you, see you in uh, next lecture, inshallah. Subhanahu Rabbik Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasukur. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.